The biggest pain point for sourcing or e-commerce can be your shipping. I am still learning the process as we go, but want to share my lessons learned for your business when sourcing from China. So some of the topics I'm going to be talking about are the shipping methods, the shipping companies, pricing, and service. And if you stay until the end, I will share with you my personal freight forwarder that I have been using for my sourcing business. So let's get started with some shipping methods. So you obviously have the ship by sea and the ship by air. But let me talk about the ship by sea first. Let me talk about some of the pros and the cons. Usually it's slower, but more cost effective. You may have to jump through more hoops. There are higher chances of confiscations and issues at ports. There are also a lot of hidden fees that you may not be aware of until the goods actually arrive to the port. They tend to be less trackable, so it's hard to know where they're at in the process. And lastly, insurance is very important because in nowadays, boats still sink and you can imagine all the goods can be lost when you don't have insurance. So it can be quite expensive without insurance. Now let's talk about air. It's usually faster, there are less hidden fees, and usually you're able to pass through customs easily. It's more trackable as in you know exactly where it's at in the world. And if I had a choice, I would go with air all the time because of the traceability. However, note that the cost may be a lot more expensive using air for bulk items. So now let's go into different shipping companies that are supported within China that can ship overseas. The most famous of them all is SF or Shengfeng, but it's also the most expensive. You have EMS that tends to be the most economical, China Post is also economical but tends to be very slow. ePacket, if you're familiar with drop shipping or e-commerce, is usually the cheapest but the slowest. There are also limitations using ePacket. For example, there should be no branded items and no alcohol or cigarettes or anything like that. FedEx, it's expensive but reliable. DHL is also expensive and reliable. And there are also special companies that usually provide warehousing services and have discounts for shipping because they deal with large amounts of shipping every day. So now let's go on to the next topic, which is probably the most important for you, is the pricing. Note that prices can fluctuate, but I'm going to be giving you an example as of right now at this day that I will put on the bottom of this screen. For this example, I'm going to ship something that is 2 kilograms just so that it can be included in the e-packet and that is 15 by 15 by 15 centimeters in dimensions. The destination will be to the US from China. Note that these rates will definitely be different based on different countries, so don't feel like this will apply to your country when shipping from China. So let's go to the breakdown. SF, Shenfeng, 275 RMB and it takes seven to nine working days to reach its final destination. EMS, 282 RMB, 15 to 25 working days. FedEx, 416 RMB, five to seven working days. DHL, 342 RMB, five to seven working days. ePacket, 195 RMB, 20 to 35 working days. China Post, 215 RMB, 30 to 60 working days. From my previous experience, once items get past 10 kilograms, they start getting exponentially more expensive with regards to shipping by air versus shipping by boat. For example, if something were to start weighing 40 kilograms, the cost of shipping by air may be around 4 to 5,000 RMB and the cost by shipping by boat will be maybe 2 to 3,000 RMB and I'm just using USA as this example. So if you are buying in bulk and not just using small B2C e-commerce services, then you may need to consider going through the boat versus going through the plane option. Just note that I recommend you definitely buy insurance because boats do sink. Not that it will happen to you, but if you don't have insurance and all the goods in your boat sink, you're kind of out of luck. So make sure you protect yourself. Last thing I want to talk about is service. If you do this 100% independently, as in you have a contact or you're in China to help you move the items from the warehouse to a freight forwarder, expect to do more work in the back end. When dealing with shipping companies directly, you will not get the discounts that the warehouses do because the warehouse throughput is going to be a lot greater and provide more business for the shipping companies than an individual like yourself. 
You will also need to be in charge of filling in the bill of materials, so if there's any batteries, any special liquids, any sensitive items, you need to declare these so that you don't get your items pushed back at customs. If there are any errors with this bill of items, you're at risk at getting your goods confiscated at the port or at the destination. This is also a very time consuming task, as it usually handled by professionals who have been doing freight forwarder services for years and they usually provide an additional cost for this service. But if you have the knowledge and the expertise to handle this part on your own, by all means, do so. But just remember, you will most likely not get the same cost of shipping that the warehouses are offered from these big companies. I recommend using professional freight forwarders that either deal with B2C or B2B services. From my experience, B2C freight forwarder services offer more for the money you pay. They tend to offer photos and inspections a lot easier than the bulk items. They're also willing to consolidate your packages all into one bag to save you on shipping which can actually save you a lot of money if you have your items coming from four to five different factories that are producing your goods. Quiet of 56 is the company I currently use and they offer all kinds of services and they're a great resource for me. You can actually check out the link up here and the video up here for more details on exactly how to use their services because I use them all the time and I would recommend them for anyone. I just ask that if you do decide to use their services, you need to have a WeChat account and that you please use my link for that it helps you at no extra cost and you actually get more discounts for using my link. When you start getting into the B2B side versus the B2C side, it becomes more expensive and sometimes more complicated, especially when going through customs. Some freight forwarders want you to handle the whole bill of materials process by yourself and this is very time consuming. For you have to contact the supplier, get the dimensions, the weights, and the exact items inside the package, which a lot of your suppliers may not even respond to you unless you give them a phone call. If you try and contact them on 1688, good luck getting a response back within one day. They might take their time. And from my experience working for B2B kind of forwarders, most likely won't provide other services like inspections because you're buying items in bulk in the hundreds and maybe even the thousands. So they don't have the time or the manpower to go ahead and look at every single item to make sure it's good to go. So you may have to do a lot of work either beforehand with the supplier and ask the supplier to take photos or pay up a lot of front for them to provide that service. So if your business is mainly dealing with small items like impulse buying that you can easily ship overseas, then you can consider looking for a freight forwarder that's professional in B2C services and taking photos, getting inspections, making sure the item is correct, making sure the shipping goes to the right location, and to get actual really attractive pricing for your end customer if they end up using your services. You will need to dig deeper if you do more B2B services and look for more professional services that usually have more costs, like if you have large packages because there are different kinds of companies that offer different kinds of services. Last thing I want you to know about shipping within China is that there are some freight forwarders that are specialized in specific regions. What does that mean? You may not have a freight forwarder that can satisfy all the locations you need to ship to overseas, or you're in a particular location that maybe freight forwarding is not so common yet. So let's say you pick a random country in your continent, let's just go with Africa in this example, and you want to ship at an affordable rate to Namibia or Nigeria. Well, a lot of the famous and well-known freight forwarders charge really expensive rates because there aren't that much cargo going back and forth from China in those locations. But if you look deeper, you may be able to find a partner that only deals with shipments in that location. Therefore, their pricing will be a lot more attractive, but their service may not be as great as the professional and more experienced freight forwarders. You may need to do more work on your own in the back end when using their services, but because they specialize in your country, they most likely have more cargo going back and forth between China and your country and can offer more attractive rates to make your business more profitable in your home country. If you want, you can scan this QR code, add me as a friend on WeChat, and I can add you to some shipping groups to help you look for the proper freight forwarder for your country if my freight forwarder cannot satisfy your needs. So if you're very focused on which country you're doing business with, consider looking for a specialized freight forwarder that specializes in shipping in your country. That way, you can most likely get the best bang for your buck. I hope you learned something from this video, and if you did, I'd appreciate it if you smash that like button. 
Hopefully you have a better understanding of how shipping works within China for your business. You can consider following me on social media if you have any questions or need consultation on my Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I'm reachable pretty much everywhere. Anyways, keep surviving and I'll catch you in the next video.